Now, in commemoration of World Sight Day, we are bringing you a very special guest on the show today. That is no other than Dr. Biola Oyelaye. Now, we are looking into World Sight Day, but beyond that, we are looking at eye care for all of us. How can we take care of our eyes better and what do we need to start doing and also avoiding in order to ensure that we have the best eyesight at all times? In no time at all, I'm going to introduce our guest to you today. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you, Thank you for having us. me. Thank you. All right, I'm, I'm very interested in World Sight Day, but like Leila mentioned, we're looking at the care of the eyes. So let's go straight away to the care of the eyes. Now, what concerns me is that we're a social media-driven generation that likes to look at our screens because everybody's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everybody's pressing phones at all points. I mean, we have people watching our TV screens. How harmful are these to our eyes? And is there anything we can do differently to help our eyes? Okay, first of all, when we look at the screens, our phones, the computers, laptops, and everything, we don't blink as often as we should. We're staring at the screen. So first of all, we get dry eyes. And the eyes, over time, become more and more uncomfortable. And the symptoms you get from that is people say, oh, my eyes are burning, or I get a sharp, uh, sharp uh, prick on the eye. That's probably because the eye is dry. So the first and foremost, initial symptoms are dry eyes. Then, usually over a period of time, you may now start de developing headaches. Depends on how many hours uh, you, use, uh, you use the screen a day. I remember more than 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when, this, when computer use became very, very common, there were laws that said use computers for maximum of 90 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes. These were the European laws. And have a break for about three to five minutes. And a break just means don't look at your screen, just look elsewhere. But now you have reports of people um, using the screen or using their computers all day, 12 hours, 14 hours and everything. And it's having a detrimental effect. Now if you go to countries like um, in the Far East, you find out that in children now, virtually everybody mm. wears glasses. In, in, I think in China, in the universities or some studies done either in China or Japan, there have been about 90% of university students being short-sighted wearing glasses. So is this as a result of tech? Right. Now, what, uh, there, there are various schools of thought, but a school of thought says because we are now getting more and more used to a near world, mm. in, in, in the past, people were outdoors, children running around, playing football and everything. But now, most, most children are indoors looking at screens and everything. So we're getting more and more short-sightedness reported. Now, granted, more tests are being done, but people feel it's more than just the test being done. So in answer to your question, there's a school of thought that says, mm. because we're getting more and more used to a near world, we're getting more and more short-sighted. Wow. Now, this is really scary because we are having, and now that you say it, it's putting things in perspective, because I have nieces, and to calm them down, put them in the room, put on the cartoon on the laptop, <laughs> yeah. and they're watching or put, put on the TV for yeah. them to watch. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of this going on. Now, let's look at Nigeria. How particular are we about our, the care of our eyes? We find that people go to the hospital a lot for checkup. Now, people are being more aware of things like doing HIV tests. In the month of October, we have awareness for breast cancer. But how aware and how conscious are we about the importance of checking our eyes? Okay, and now you said, so it just reminds me that the theme for this year's World Side Days, mm. eye care everywhere. And we have two distinct groups, those in the rural settings and those in the urban settings. Those in the rural settings, let's just say a lot of times they don't have access to eye care, so they don't have their eyes tested or they don't have the opportunity to have their eyes tested. Those in urban settings, if you ask uh, 10 people randomly when you had an eye test last, many of them, will tell you that either never had an eye test wow. or I can see a mile ahead, why do I need to have an eye test or things like that. So we're not doing the um, normal behavior seeking of medical, not just eyes now, of medical checks, routine medical checks. I, I, I want to jump on that. Really. Yes. Why do I need to have a, an eye test? Right. Most especially when my eyes are functioning, I can yeah. read well, Good. I'm not having headaches. Nothing okay, is wrong I'm, my eyes. I'm very pleased you asked that question. Now, there's some eye conditions or eye diseases that you might see clearly until the disease is in advanced stage. And the most 
common or the most popular is glaucoma, which is the second leading cause of blindness in the world, or it's the, actually the number one leading cause of irreversible blindness. Now, what happens? You don't have symptoms at all. There are various types of glaucoma, but the type we have in this country is called the primary open angle glaucoma. And I think about 97, 98% of our glaucoma is like that in this country. You have no symptoms until the very advanced stage. What happens initially is that you start losing peripheral vision. So you don't see things on the side, but you don't realize that because you have two eyes open. And probably if you drive, you might just notice I'm always hitting the left side of my car, or I'm always bumping into people on the left side. And then you get stories that people accidentally cover one eye uh, maybe they're rubbing their face or something, they accidentally cover one eye, and they realize the other eye can't see. In fact, most glaucoma in Nigeria is diagnosed at a very late stage. I just had to do a quick wow. check now, yes. just to be sure. <laughs> wow, interesting. Now, one yes. thing that we also find in Nigeria as well is that, according to you, thankfully, research also shows that a lot of people in Nigeria are prone to cataracts. Right. Now. We can use the normal saying, which is, is there something in the waters? <laughs> but of course, there is a scientific explanation behind right. this as okay. well. Okay. Why are Nigerians more prone to cataracts than a lot of other nationalities around the world? Okay. Um, first and foremost, the number one cause of cataracts is age. The longer you live, the more likely you are to get cataracts. And it's said that if you want to live long, it's inevitable you'll have to get cataracts. It doesn't mean you'll need to have surgery. You'll need to have cataracts. And a cataract is simply the cloudiness of the natural lens inside our eye. Oh. So the number one cause is age. So if you're going to live, if you pray you live long, mm. then you should pray you get cataracts as well. Really? Yes, it's inevitable you get cataracts. It doesn't mean you need to have surgery. But as we get older, we get wrinkly skin, we get gray hair, we lose our hair. That's simply what will happen but as we get older. But young people get cataracts too. Very good. Yes, young people get cataracts. Actually, some babies are born with cataracts. Mm. We call that congenital cataracts. Either because it's in the family, or sometimes the mothers use some medication, or they have some illnesses within the first three months of mm. life. So that's what we call the congenital cataracts. We have infantile cataracts, whereby young children also get cataracts. We have juvenile cataracts, and then adult onset cataracts. Now, going back, sunlight is one of the causes of, of predisposing factors to, to cataracts. So sunlight could also help. I mean, a lot of countries, people walk around with sunglasses here. Nigeria, we don't do that a lot apart from a fashion accessory. Okay, so cataracts is one of the causes of, of oh, sorry, sunlight is one of the causes of cataracts. So if you look at all the causes of cataracts, it can come at any time during life. It's just that it's much more common when you're 60, 70 years onwards. Well, we just learned okay. something new. So wearing glasses is not always to make a fashion statement, but to protect your eyes from sunlight and to reduce the incidences of cataract. Yes, you'd see some glasses that say ultraviolet light protection and things like that. Oh. That's what it's about. Okay. Now, you mentioned some kids being born having congenital cataract. That's right. Which leads me to my next question. Are eye problems really hereditary? Are all eye problems hereditary? Not all eye problems are hereditary. Some are hereditary. Um, uh, I always try to get back to cataracts and glaucoma because these are the number one and number two causes of blindness. You could have hereditary cataracts, you could have hereditary glaucoma as well. In fact, if you have glaucoma in your family, once you get to the age of 13 blacks and 14 whites, you should have regular annual eye tests. It doesn't mean you get cataracts, but it increases the chances about fourfold compared to somebody who doesn't have cataracts. So if you have cataracts, in the family, sorry, if you have glaucoma in the family, I'm talking about glaucoma there, you must always get your eyes tested once you get to a certain age. Oh. Okay. okay, interesting. Now, Dr. Yalea, we'd also like to speak to you about inclusion. What we find is that, of course, loss of sight also terms as a disability. And mm. unfortunately, in Nigeria's society today, we do not have the right laws and policies in place to actually be there and provide the welfare, welfare sorry, for disabled persons. Mm -hmm. We have a high percentage of Nigerians who have loss of sight today. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the welfare is not there for them. First of all, I'd like to know how you react to this. And then, of course, I'd like to know what ideas you have in place in terms of the government, the government actually enacting that necessary change that we need to see. Okay. 
Um, what we have in Nigeria for people who have lost their sight is really next to nothing, mm. okay? And what we could have, there are a lot of things we could have. One key thing that uh, people forget about is rehabilitation. Now, for example, if you have poor sight, it's not gone completely. Contrast is what you use to define most things. And, um, for example, if you want to put on the light switch, or put on the light, we'll turn the light switch somewhere. The wall is white, the light switch is white, you won't see it. But if you put like a black uh, square over the, around where the socket is, mm. and, the, and the person who has visual impairment just sees a little bit of black, a little bit of white, he knows that's where the light switch is. So you can play around with things with contrast to make things um, much better, easy, easier for people. Um, in terms of what the government has in store, in many countries we have free eye tests for people above a certain age or people who earn below a certain amount, okay? And having the free eye tests actually um, gets them to have the eye test done. And then you find out that a lot of diseases are picked at the early stage. So if you can pick a disease at the early stage and treat appropriately, then they're less likely to go blind. So you'd, you'd, lose, um, a lot of, you'd lose a lot of years just because you don't have an eye test. You lose, you lose a lot of years of sight because when you mm -hmm. pick things up, you're virtually all blind. Now, if you notice uh, the blind people going around on the streets or so, there's always a little child that goes with them. Nobody realizes the impact that the little child now is stuck with the blind person and deprived of his or her education. Yeah. So there are so many factors in the society that people with, um, the, with visual impairment... It's intersectional. Exactly. So there are so many things that, that, I mean, that can be done within the within this, this society. But I'm sure even within all parts of uh, life or parts of the society, they'll say, oh, this can be done differently, this can be done differently, this can be done differently. But there's sometimes little, little things like, I mean, having if somebody... Having a free eye test, for Yes, having a free eye test. Do you have anything like that? And what is the preparation for World Sight? It's happening on the 11th of October. Yeah, yes. So what is the preparation in Nigeria? Do we have any response to that? How are you celebrating World okay. Sight Day? Now, World Sight Day is usually the second Thursday in October every year. So this year it falls on uh, Thursday, the 11th of October. And it's sort of like a way of awareness to talk about preventable blindness and visual concerns because about 80% of blindness worldwide is said to be preventable or avoidable. So World Sight Day is the day of raising awareness. Now there are a lot of um, lectures, a lot of TV and radio programs that um, my society is involved in, in going to um, preach the gospel in terms of having access to eye care. Like I said, eye care everywhere is the theme this year. Um, a lot of times people have free eye screening, which sometimes we encourage the members of, of our professional society, to, that's the Ophthalmic Society of Nigeria, to throw their doors open and not charge for eye tests on a certain day. A lot of people do, a lot of eye clinics now do free screening. That's the back to school program so that the children, <coughs> excuse me, the children have eye tests before they go to school. And if you go to a lot of ophthalmology and optometry clinics, they are encouraged to do all these free eye tests. So we, you find that people throw their doors open, they have health walks, they have free screening in some organizations, like um, my, my uh, clinic was involved with one in somewhere in Lekki a couple of days ago. There's um, an NGO and some other health facilities that are having something, and I think it's either Shomon or Bariga this weekend. Mm. So there are a lot of things <coughs> happening in terms of um, free or well, eye, eye tests and everything. And eye care to have eye care, yes. And you're basically raising awareness on why people need to have the eye care. So very quickly, mm -hmm. tell us what will be your tips on eye care. What are the do's and don'ts? And please make reference to the myth. I don't know if it's a myth or a fact surrounding the use of contact lens and how they can lead to blindness. 
I knew the, when I talked to young ladies like you, the contact lens story must come out. Because so. <laughs> it's a fashion accessory. Yes, it? yes, yes. Well, yes, it's, it, it's, it's sometimes more than a fashion accessory. Because sometimes some people actually need to have contact lenses. For example, you hardly see a sportsman or a sportswoman wearing glasses. It doesn't mean they have, they have perfect vision. Yeah. It just means for the sports, they might just need to put the contact lenses in and um, take off their glasses. Now, contact lenses are good if they're not abused. And when I say that, you have some contact lenses that are daily use. Put them on. At the end of the day, take them out, throw them away. You have some that are weekly disposable. Put them on every day. Take them out in the evening. At the end of the week, throw it away. You have monthly, you have two monthly, you have extended wear, which could have to nine to 12 months. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you have some that you can live in permanently for a long time, especially for those people who have arthritis and can't get the contact lenses out of their eyes. So the key thing about the contact lenses is know what their contact lenses are for and don't abuse the use. If you have any problem, take the contact lenses out immediately and get to see your contact lens practitioner. So I guess the message is reuse it, don't abuse it, if you have That's to right. reuse it. Yes, you <laughs> said it better than I. <laughs> Thank you. No, very, very interesting, okay. sir. How can people contact you if they need any more information on anything to do with this? Okay, um, I'll leave a phone number which you can put on screen. Okay. Okay, or you can contact me at my office email is theidoctors at yahoo.com or theidoctors dot ng.com but I'll give you the details where we could leave okay. thank you very much doctor thank you very much for joining us okay, so there you to enjoy more of this our Ogunge videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page you go love her